and this is Kreskin, and of course you know me as the amazing Kreskin. I've always enjoyed the challenge and the interest that you folks create when you suggest I review various movies. Well, one was brought to my attention just recently that I understand was in theaters in April of this past year and had a great deal of attention given it. I avoided reading the reviews, although I saw one or two commentaries, but I decided what better way to review the movie than the way I've done the others? Watch it, see it, and take it in. So last night, I sat in a darkened room, my office, and there was turned on for me the movie Morbius. It's a horror movie, and you'll know from the very beginning it is a horror movie. I like great horror movies. I'm very particular about the various kinds I see because I'm not looking for endless blood and gross uh, decapitation, what have you, but the drama of the story. But this movie has some very intriguing aspects about it. The way it is filmed, because it seems like, in essence, it's mainly black and white, but there is color from time to time in the movie and the acting. Uh, by the way, as I watch the movie, it's a 90 minute movie, not too long, and it does move pretty fast. I kept thinking in the latter part of the movie that, my God, this would make a good comic, a comic book. This could be continued. And even though I've seen the movie, if another sequel were made, I will tell you very honestly, in spite of my criticism of the movie, I would intend to watch the next step of the movie. But here it has been in the form of a comic book uh, series and based on, by the way, on uh, Marvel comic books, their writings. Now, the story deals with a, a, a doctor, Dr. Morbius, who is involved in treating a strange rare blood disorder. Of course, when you think of that, you immediately think of Bela Lugosi and the classic stories of Dracula and what have you. But blood seems to be an obsession in this movie. There are times when you're going to see it, much to sometimes a bit of discomfort, but also horror. And there are other times when you walk into a room and there may be 60, 70, or 200 bottles of similar blood because Dr. Morpheus was attempting with a desperate gamble to find a cure of what seems to be a radical change that was taking place in other people. And, and it was a rare blood disorder. But what was incredible and significant is that a number of people were suffering from the same fate so it wasn't something spontaneous or clever and what have you and just passing wind. No, it was extremely intriguing. And I'll tell you what makes it even worse. As the people involved in the story, and there's a beautiful gal within the story, but she doesn't retain her beauty very long through the movie because she's obviously affected by the villainous of the effects of this, this red blood. And oh, by the way, the effects of the red blood is extremely unforgettable because the victims of it are filled with madness to the point of almost wanting to destroy the body, the body and let's say the soul, but the physical body of the human being. When you see how a person who's small and not that strong looking will pick up someone and throw them through the air so they bounce off the wall and what have you, you just look twice because, of course, the theory, if you've read about vampirism and the vampire villains, is that they have greater strength, greater lengthier life, but their activities are filled with horrendous, horrendous evil. So 
The answer is that Dr. Morpheus wants to find a way of curing this people of this disease, the superhuman strength and the speed and the blood that they come through. There's one. There's a couple of scenes in the movie. This it throws you. You can't even believe what you just saw. When a person chases another person to the top floor of a building that may be 20 stories, 34 stories, 100 stories, who knows, it's inside. But a lot of the rooms have glass fronts and glass backgrounds and what have you. And the one person being chased is attacked by the vampire and the vampire sails out the window, 20 stories high, and slowly, it sounds rapidly, but finally when he hits bottom, he hits bottom and goes on with life. Then you begin to understand that it has been noted that the vampires had tremendous power and it was never understood how did they maintain this power. He wanted to figure out how, if there was a way of preventing a person from becoming a monster. Well, the honestness of the story, and it will enter your mind as you watch this movie, and it's not a giveaway, because it certainly fits the power of the vampire, is that some of these very people who were using, using this human blood to counteract the effects were now being affected by the same power. A touching, moving phase of a story which almost gets to you emotionally is the closest that one man has to a gentleman he considers his closest friend. The strongest, most villainous vampire in the movie. And he tries to convince him, please, I will guard you, I will try to help you, we will find a solution. A man who obviously cherishes his friendship. Well, you don't have to read my mind to figure out what happens to that man. But when it does happen, folks, I can only tell you this. It is horrendous. This is a dramatic movie. The latter part of it is weaker than the other part, but no, no matter, you just watch the movie through the end. Does it have an ending? No. It doesn't suggest to be continued, not really. But because vampires don't die, they don't die when they're shot, when they're stabbed and what have you. They do exist for a long, long time. I think, folks, if you like great horror stories, as I do, you'll find this movie insuperable.